Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Witch's Hour. I'm your host, Sid Ryder, and this is my guest, Gigi Blitzer. How are you doing? Hello, everybody. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing good. Can't complain. It wouldn't do no good anyway, would it? No, it wouldn't. The universe wouldn't bless us if all we did was complain. Uh, you gotta, you gotta take a life and just be happy. Grab it by the balls and run with it. I like how you said that. Grab it by the balls. Yep. And deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> how are you dealing with this COVID situation? Are you, are you, are you starting to go crazy at being at home all the time, or do you get no. the essential? No, actually, my kids keep me entertained. I have two teenagers, so that's that's a lot of fun. And here between homeschooling and my daughter flicking me the finger when she's working, <laughs> you know, I get smiles on my face and, <laughs> and then gaming. So it's it's fun. It's it's different. <laughs> so you're uh, you never done anything like this before? Nope. Just say thank you for being brave enough to get on here and do a show with me. Yes, thank you for having me. Oh. It's my honor. It's my honor. It's, it's, it's my pleasure to. I, I, I enjoy meeting new people. I enjoy getting to know new people. It's me. It's always been about the connection, being able to connect with people, the healthy exchange of energy between two people. And it's, that's, I, I, I live off this kind of stuff. And I'm glad to be back doing it again. Well, it's great to be able to meet people that have the same interests as you and have people look down on you for what you like and what you believe in. So that's that's what's so great about, you know, being on here. Well, once again, thank you for being a guest. Thank you. <laughs> so I, I start this, sh I do this show, and this show is kind of like me asking you questions, kind of like a good cop, bad cop. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to be the bad cop. Anyway, I'm just, <laughs> what's up? I'm just saying again. So what I do is I ask, I ask a few questions to get to know. It's kind of like meeting a witch, and this is kind of like getting to know who you are, what's your path, what you do, what what's your practice, things of that nature. So I usually start the, the questions off by asking, how did you get your name, GG? Blizzard. Is, 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 it, is it a witch's name or is it just your giving name? Uh, I guess it could be a witch's name. I mean, I don't know exactly if it is a witch's name, but my niece, she was three years old, could not pronounce my name. So instead of her saying Jeannie, which is my name, she kept calling me Gigi. So after she's 19, 20 years old now. And after all this time, I'm now using it as my name. Oh, well, that's just nice. Yeah. And yes, it could be a witch's name. Who's to say that our or that we could we couldn't use our given name as our as to represent the witch a witch name a magical name? Right. I'm just saying I have a I have <laughs> a magical name. It's Beard and Seer, but. I, I, I use it a lot, I'm not, but not everybody has one. I'm just curious. I was just curious if Gigi it was it a witch name, but it, it, it should be, I guess, right? I guess it could. I never really knew how to come by getting a witch's name, and never even, you know, worried about getting a witch's name because I knew who I was inside. Well, I like that. I like that. Thank you. So, how long have you been practicing? Well, it's two years now, but beforehand I did practice when I was a teenager and and then just went off of it. You know, didn't think nothing about it. I was like, oh, I'm not no witch. I'm just a teenager playing around because I watched movies or something. <laughs> and then, you know, we tried the whole church thing. That was a disaster. The pastor at this church wanted to kick me out of the church. <laughs> Oh wow! I was I was just too happy and, and just I spoke I I, I don't have no filter <laughs> so I spoke my mind and he was up on the stage or whatever you want to call it and he's like you out I'm like <laughs> okay <laughs> during a service yes during the service my husband was laughing at me are you fucking serious 
<laughs> yes. He was like, only you, somebody would kick out of a church. I was like, yeah, well. <laughs> Did you get on the finger as you was walking out? Oh, I didn't walk out. I stayed there and stared at him. <laughs> I would have walked out and I would have done one of these numbers. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> You're cool. But fuck you, but fuck you. Oh, you're all right. I can deal with you, but oh, but you behind there, fuck you. <laughs> I mean, it was crazy. And what it was, I was trying to, as an adult, I was trying to find a place to fit into. And obviously, the church was not a place for me to fit into. I think a lot of people struggle trying to find a place to fit in. Yes. We spend our whole, uh, this, uh, we, a lot of people spend their whole life trying to find that one place that we fit in. And we all have to always have a tendency to think it's always going to be the church that we're going to fit in at. And I'm just I'm almost as much as guilty as it as the next person when it comes to that. I bounce back and forth from church to witchcraft, from witchcraft to church. It was always a car, inner, inner turmoil all the time with me. Am I, am, I, am I evil? Is this? Am I? Am I going to burn in hell for this? And I'm like, you know, I didn't start coming into my own until like the last. I'm all, I've been off and on practicing witchcraft for 25 years, but it wasn't until the last maybe two, three years where I actually said, okay, I got, I, I have to find something that I got to stick with it and not quit bouncing back and forth. I got to follow my heart and not my mind. Yes, and that's exactly what happened with me. And it's a funny story how in two years ago, I came back into being who I am. Uh, when we moved in, I met my neighbor and she came right out. And she's like, I'm just letting you know, I'm a Wiccan. I'm like, oh, okay, that's wonderful. And then we just started talking and I was telling her about, you know, my past and everything. And she's like, well, you could see it in you. She's like, uh, I've seen a couple of the shirts you wore. I was like, yeah, you know, it's never really left me. <laughs> and then we just became great. We're not even friends, we're sisters. We became close sisters and we even went to Salem together. So are you guys still friends now? We are. She was just over here today. <laughs> okay, nice. It's good. To, it's nice to find those kinds of bonds that seem like they last forever. And all yeah. feels like you guys have known each other. And it almost feels like you've known them in a past life. Oh my goodness. Well, I really believe the goddess had brought us together because, you know, her mom's name is the same name as my mom. Oh. I mean, I mean, there's so many things that are the same. It's just like, wow, you know, we were really meant to be brought together. So, you know, it, the universe, the goddess, they do it all for us. We just got to listen. <laughs> and sometimes that could be hard to do sometimes, huh? In a world that is today, yes. Absolutely. So, we established that you, you, you openly admit now that you're a witch. I am. So what, what is your path? What is it that you follow? Um, I love the moon goddess. She, she attracts me a lot, just, you know. But I can't say I'm on a particular path. I'm into whatever I can get my hands on. I just love learning and love doing more with, with this culture. Do you, so when, when you say the moon goddess, that kind of reminds me a bit of Wicked. Yes. So I like Wiccan, you know, paganism. You know, that's, that's I like a lot of that. Well, paganism um, is, in essence, is kind of like an umbrella. Yes. But when you talk about Wiccan or Wicca, that's more like a, a structured based religion in a sense, if that makes any sense. It, it does. And, you know, she, my, my sister, she's Wiccan. And I told her, you know, we had the same discussion, and I was like, I really can't tell you exactly what I'm following. I said, I like putting my hand in every little thing. I like learning it all. And I can that you're following your heart. I'm sorry? I can tell you what you're following, and that's your heart. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I feel you, because I, I don't resonate with a certain path 
Now, when I started 25 years ago, I, my, when I met my first wife, she introduced me into Wiccan, a Wicca. And so that kind of resonated with me a little bit. And I started doing my studying. I can remember my, uh, do you remember your very first book? Um, it was a book about how to mind read people. And it had spells in there to help you. Stay out of I, my head. Do what? Stay out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> It comes in handy when you got children. <laughs> truth. That's the truth. You had to loan me that book sometime. <laughs> actually, this book was actually when I was about 14 years old, a witch. My older brother's friend gave it to me to read. And I ended up reading it. And I was just like, I was just memorized by it. I would go to school trying to read my teachers. Like, <laughs> so yeah, that was a lot of fun. So... You don't, you don't have a set path. No. I get that. I, I totally, I totally get that. So what sort of things do you do then in your practice now? I mean, what is it that you, what, 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 how, what is it that you incorporate in your life? I incorporate stones, gems, you know, uh, for an example, I went to a funeral for my, for my mom's best friend and it was her brother that passed away and you know i didn't know her brother at all but i went there to be with her and i know i'm i'm gonna say i'm an impasse because i get people's feelings so strongly here i i did not know who he was but i felt her and i bawled with her i had my students in my pocket to help me and keep me calm but i also like tarot cards you know i do spells you know I charge my water with the moon. Nice. Love, I love my plants. And I put a lot of spells into my cooking. Kitchen magic. Yes, I'm into that too. Kitchen witchcraft. I love kitchen witchcraft. I, I love uh, green witchcraft too. I love plants. I love nature. I, yes. I, guess, I guess I'm more of a nature-based guy, I guess. But with a little bit of a dark twist to it. <laughs> I do have, you know, I have not done nothing on what I feel darkness inside me, although there's times I would love to just sit down and <sighs> there's nothing wrong with it, but I'd love to do a blood ritual one day with somebody that knows what they're doing and be like, okay, I'm in, let's do this. But I've never come that far to doing one. <laughs> well, you can do uh, blood magic on your own as well, though. Right. Like you can, uh, oh, this is going to sound odd, and I don't want to sound all gross, but one of the most magical parts of a, of a person is their menstrual cycles. Yeah, yep. <laughs> and you, can take, you can take this blood, because it's, in, in essence, it's everything that makes you, the it's, it's inside the menstrual cycle, in essence. And people use this to charge sigils, to cast spells, to give it a little extra um. So, you know, it's cool to do blood magic with somebody else, but it, which I've never done that. But I, I guess not. You wouldn't be a man then, would you? <laughs> who says, who says I, I, I'm not going through that transformation? Oh, wow. <laughs> you, you've got lovely hair. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> but in essence, you can. You, no, I can still do blood magic, but it's right. I can pick. I can pick. Like, like for instance, I think I still have it. I do. Uh huh. I made up my own sigil, and I pricked okay. my finger, and I put my uh, my fingerprint on with my blood on the sigil. Okay. So I can still do blood magic, of course, but it's it's, it's not as potent as what the female can do. There's right. More, more energy and strength and power behind doing it as a female versus a man. I mean, it's still it's still powerful, but it's, you know what I'm trying to get at. I do. I understand. It's so uncomfortable for a guy to talk about it. <laughs> oh, us women, we just sit there and babble about it. <laughs> We're so used to it. <laughs> good about babbling, by the way. 
But I would definitely, I would definitely try that blood ritual. That you know. I suggest maybe coming up with your own sigils, like I did, and put a little stamp to it by using your own blood. It gives it a little extra charge, a little extra oomph. Okay. Just a suggestion. Just a suggestion. Well, hey, that's why we all come together. That way we can learn off of each other. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you, talk, you said you, you remember when you was a child, you, you, you watched a movie, a witchy movie. Now, do you remember what that witchy movie was? Yes, because it's still my favorite. The Craft. <laughs> it's a good flick. It really is a good flick. Who, who does not like that movie? <laughs> what witch does not like The Craft? What witch does not like Hocus Pocus? What witch what, yes. does not like Practical Magic? The ones that throw them off is one of my favorite witchy movies is The Wizard of Oz. Oh, okay. You have all I was the to see, I liked The Wizard of Oz, but I was scared of the flying monkeys. <laughs> it was my favorite. They were terrifying. <laughs> I was all scared of the witch, the, 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 the green, what's her, the Wicked Witch of the West. Yes. I was always scared of her. I will get you, my pretty. <laughs> now, see, I liked her. I hated her monkeys. <laughs> I love the good witch, Melinda. I loved her. You have the witches. You have the wizard. Yeah. All the you have all the elements: courage, uh, brains, all the things like you know the Tin Man, the Lion, the Scarecrow, Dorothy. You have all these elements that fits so well with modern day witchcraft. A lot of people don't tend to overlook this movie, but in reality, you have dwarfs, you have everything that you can think of magical in this movie, all in one, and all in one. And they overlook it. <laughs> Do they ever? <laughs> <laughs> That's Willy Wonka. <laughs> Is it Willy Wonka? Or is yeah, you're uh, doing the Willy Wonka. Or is it uh, Alice in Wonderland? Lollipop. They were doing the lollipop song, the midgets. That's it. The lollipop song. Yep. Lollipop kids. The lollipop. <laughs> <laughs> you're just clowning, folks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll stop clowning. I won't. I won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so The Craft is your favorite movie. Now, do you remember uh, what what was your defining moment to where you said, "I am going to devote my life to witchcraft, my 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 spiritual path to witchcraft." Was there a defining moment in your life that you said, "Okay, I'm going," to, as you appropriately put it earlier before we started recording, what point did it? point in your life where you said I'm going to grab it by the balls and go with it it was when we moved into our new home and you know I knew who I was and I I didn't care what people thought I you know just moving into a new place I'm starting new and this is who I am that that's what it took me moving because we lived in our old place for 10 years you know, we knew everybody in the neighborhood, and I think I was more worried what people were going to think of me. To where now, it's like a fresh start for you. Exactly, and the you fresh start the was to be, open them doors. Yeah, and that's what it was. And it also was meeting my neighbor, my sister. Now, you know, it just all hit right on at home, and I was like, the "Yeah, this is timing, huh?" Yep. Sweet. So, I'm just glad I was able to find it sooner than most people and be able to grasp it and take it. <laughs> That's, it, it, it. We all have those defining moments in our lives where we we come to a crossroad and we have to decide what path that we want to take. And I always found it very interesting when I, when I picked the brains of my guests of what their defining moment was. And it seems like every story has its own unique tell. Every person I've ever interviewed, it's like it has its own unique story. 
and, and I, I just find it amazing, really, that everybody's different, so different, but yet so, but so different, but yet connected in the end. Right. We all had to learn to become our true selves. <laughs> and that's hard, because we, we go through so many stages in our life. We, uh, you know, when we're younger, we, we are designed to make a ton of mistakes. And we let these mistakes haunt us for long, long periods of times, until it becomes, till it becomes chains that bind us. And that makes yeah. it. And it's so hard to break yourself free from those chains until you come across that defining moment in your life that you, you're telling yourself, "This is what I'm going to do. This is the path I'm going to take, regardless of what anybody else thinks about me." That, ladies and gentlemen. What you just heard from Gigi is that's her standing in her power and owning her shit. And it's very and it's very hard for a lot of people to own their shit and not be afraid of what people think about you. I say this because I still struggle with this today. Even today, I still struggle with worrying about what people think about me. What's their perception of me? What are what are these people trying to say to tarnish my personality or my persona and i'm getting better at it i'm getting better at you know all right fuck you i, I don't <laughs> need your opinion i don't need your i don't need your approval anymore and i yeah. and i finally get to the I'm, I'm starting to get to that point where it doesn't fucking matter what you think i'm still going to be me regardless of what you you or you think about me that's right and that's how that's how i feel now i could care less what anybody thinks and of course you know you know even with you can wear a shirt that says something on it and somebody's going to judge you for it you know so it don't matter if they know who you are if you're a witch if you're not yes that's exactly right and for anybody who doesn't like it ggl <laughs> join me in this is give them the salute of Fuck you. <laughs> you don't care what you think. We don't care what you, what your opinion of us is. We are still going to be us because we fought hard to get to where we're at today. All yeah. struggles, all of our pain, all of those scars that we 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 hold, we have them for a reason. And we're everybody take that from us. We earned that shit. Well, it's like one of my favorite, my husband ended up getting me a shirt and it's, I'm actually wearing it now, but it says, shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut that. the fuck shut up. Shut the fuck up. Uh, yeah. Don't care. Exactly. <laughs> Two snaps and a Z formation. <laughs> Do you remember that show? Uh... Uh, you have to remind me, but... Okay. Back in the 90s, when Jim, before Jim Carrey or Damon Wayans or Marlon Wayans got become big, like movie stars, they had a show that well, it was a lot like Saturday Night Live, and it was called In Living Color. And okay, yes. Jim Carrey was part of that. He was like Fire Marshal Bill. He was like, let me show you something. And he was all <laughs> worked up. <laughs> he did a, a, a skit called Dura De Milo. So Damon Wayans and Marlon Wayans had a skit and it was called Men on Film and they portrayed two gay guys and one <laughs> Dave Wayne had this little teacup hat on the side of his head and whenever he liked the movie he'd give it two snaps up and a Z formation. <laughs> That's funny. It was. I That's gonna be in my head. I won't be doing that to my kids. <laughs> uh -uh. I, uh, uh, uh. I'll give that two snaps up and a Z formation. <laughs> You've practiced that. <laughs> if you only knew. <laughs> Next time we do a show, maybe you will be interviewing me and we'll find out about what we don't know about Sid. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> <laughs> After a million dollars with sharks with lasers. There you go. <laughs> 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 That's my poor Dr. E. Warrior impersonation, folks. I'm sorry. Forgive me. 
So you like working with oracle cards. Do you do very much, uh, do you do very many oracle readings? Do you, or you just do it for, for yourself? Um, I, I just recently got them back in September. And I could have got them anywhere I live at, but I wanted to get them specifically in Salem. That, that was my witchy trip. <laughs> you know, how to get them from there. So I just started with them and I'm learning, learning with them. I've done readings for myself, for my husband and for my daughter. And here I gifted her a set herself. And she's actually known to her boyfriend. And it's, her boyfriend comes from a Christian family. So he's a bit so, and it's wonderful because they don't judge my daughter, but they had all kinds of questions because my daughter is following my path. She's That's like- I was gonna ask you, do you do, is your kids, are they following your path? Or do you do anything with your kids as far as any spell work or rituals or anything like that? Um, I do some stuff with both of them. My son, he's just a whatever kid. He could care less if there's a God, no God, just as long as there's air to breathe and he can play games. <laughs> uh, I like my kind of kid. <laughs> yeah. So he, he's just whatever. My daughter, she's she's taken my path and she's more into astrology. Um, what does a Gemini's and all that stuff? She she loves that and she's all the time drawing her own signals on herself. Uh, do you uh that's cool that she's doing her own sigils and stuff on, on, on herself. That's really cool. Not too many Oh, my daughter's an artist. <laughs> not too many people do that. That's really, really cool. So, folks, we're going to take a quick break, a, a quick music break. And when we come back, we're going to, we're going to continue our conversation with Gigi. We're going to, we're going to uh, di dig in a little bit deeper in what, what's, the, what's the make and model of what Gigi does in her life today. So we'll be right back, folks.
back, everybody, to the Witch's Hour, and this is my guest, Gigi. We were just having some conversations about a little bit about her background, about her kids, etc. So, so tomorrow, I believe it's tomorrow, Friday, is Beltane. Do you celebrate any of the Sabbaths? Um, I have, yes. Um, you know, for Christmas, we did a... a Christian Christmas, we did a Yule. Um, that was a lot of fun. The kids got a kick out of that. We just ended up making it nothing but games, and then me and my daughter went off and did our own little thing. <laughs> and last summer we did one. Uh, actually, I went somewhere. I went somewhere with my girlfriend, and we went to a, a moon ritual. And that was the first one ever, and oh my goodness. It was amazing. It was amazing doing it with a group of people. It was a coven we did it with, but we were like guests there. That's really cool. Yeah, and you know, she's like I am. We do not want to be in like a, a coven around our area just because, you know, you can get people in there like school, you know, there's going to be drama or high school problems. I, I like being an individual witch. <laughs> right. Now, do you plan on doing anything for Belte? Um, Probably not with this stuff going on and then not having the supplies. Fire? Can you make a fire? I can make a fire. Can you jump over a fire? I sure can. I hope so. <laughs> can you dance around the fire? I'm, I sure would. <laughs> there you go. There was a Beltane celebration right there. Okay. I'll have to videotape myself doing it now. Oh, oh, you have to do that. You should share it in the group. Okay. <laughs> Great idea, Gigi. But see where I'm at, it's raining, so I might have to do a candle and jump over that fire. That'll work too. That'll yeah. work. I'm hoping for good weather here where I live at myself. Because I, I, I live in an apartment, a, a apartment home, and I'm upstairs. And it, I, so I, my sister luckily lives like a block away from me, and she's got a nice little decent little sized backyard, got a little fire pit. So if the weather holds out, I'm going to take myself, my wife, and my boys to my sister's backyard, and I'm going to build a fire. Oh, that would be nice. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to try to bring, I got a, a gajon, I got some bongos, so I'm, I might bring those there, play a little bit of, of that. I got an electric drum kit right here as well. All it takes is a power cord, and I could probably pay, play that as well. And just, you know, have myself a little small, simple little Beltane ritual. Celebration. There you go. And I'm not a Wiccan, but I do follow the Sabbaths. Yep, I try to when I can. Like, yes. Nothing going on. We, you know, my sister across the street, she comes right over and we do them together because she's Wiccan, so she knows all about the the Wiccan holidays and all. So I do them with her. So that's how I'm learning the, the holidays from her. Well, I'm going to have to remind her now, hey, you forgot what tomorrow is, didn't you? <laughs> I think it's last for a couple of days, but it starts tomorrow. I think it lasts like two or three days. I could be wrong, so people out there that's watching, don't send me hate mail saying, oh, you got the thing is wrong. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's a couple of days. I think it lasts for a couple of days. But everybody celebrates it on May 1st, and that's when it, the, the beginning of Beltane celebration begins is on May 1st. Okay. Sorry, I'll still go parched. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so let's see here. Do you follow anybody on YouTube? Or is there somebody, to, like a go-to person you like to watch on YouTube to educate yourself? That, that will probably help some of the viewers out there that might want to be, that might be looking on YouTube for somebody to follow. Do you follow anybody? No, I don't follow nobody. I I do a lot of book reading. I'd rather get into books and learn myself from books. Um, uh, you know, I have checked out people on YouTube, and there's a lot of different things that people do that, you know, they. I've seen this one lady get things mixed up. You know, Satanism with Wiccan, and I'm just like, what the hell is she thinking? <laughs> you know, so I was like, okay, you know, I've got this, you know, I'm going to keep going down the path, I'm going, but in my own way. And that's the Who best. knows, maybe I'm a new a new type of witch y'all can follow. <laughs> well, I tell you, I've, I've been called a lot of things, 
like the witch guy. I've been called, that was the biggest one for a while when I first started this whole journey doing shows and put myself in the public. The big one where everybody was calling me was the witch guy. And then it moved on to the new, I was too new age to be a witch. And I thought to myself, well, how can that be? Because what I'm doing is really benefiting the, the community as a whole. Because if you think about it, I, if, you can, if you can bring mainstream into paganism, and, you, mm -hmm. and, it, and it's really been a struggle to, to, to bridge that gap between the two because you got that such a stigma with witchcraft and you know with churches they want to say it's evil it's satanism this and that and that's farthest from the truth and what people don't realize is that we all are pagans exactly every one of us are pagans we took me at me explain why everything we do in life is magic it's magic from the moment that we wake up and take our first breath, that's magic. The moment we go to the bathroom and look ourselves in the mirror, that's magic. The moment that we can get up, go to the restroom, hop in our vehicle and go to work, that's magic. Yep. You go to a store and you're standing behind somebody and you're, you're saying, hey, I'm gonna buy you a, your cup of coffee. That's magic. Magic in its core is about the human conditioning of somebody or that individual. If it wasn't for you, Gigi, or me, Sid, there wouldn't be witchcraft. A lot of people tend to blur the lines between humanity and witchcraft. You have to follow a certain tradition, a certain path, and that's not the case. Exactly, and you know, I don't put Christians down, you know, if they wanna leave, go right for it. Don't push it on me, because I don't push mine on you. But, you know, I got into a deep conversation with somebody and we're like, okay, well, first of all, the Christians have stolen Christmas from the pagans. They've stolen every single holiday. Easter. I mean, look at Easter. They just celebrate it. <laughs> and a lot of people don't. Let me say one thing. To so all the Christians, I have the utmost respect for you. Let me tell me explain why. Because you all are witches and you just don't know it. You just yep. don't know it. It's because either you've been brain, brainwashed or you refuse to accept it. Jesus Christ was a witch. Let me explain why. When the Romans decided to crucify Jesus Christ, what was their main reason for wanting to crucify Jesus Christ? Because they thought he was a witch. And he was a witch. He was a healer. He brought hope to people. He mm -hmm. stood out in a crowd. And that struck fear in people's eyes. And they wanted him gone. There's no way he could be the son of God. We all are sons and daughters of God. It's up to you to decipher whether you want to believe that it's a God as a Christian God, or it's the God Pan, or it's the God Goddess Freya. It's up, yep. it's up to you. They all are the same. At the end of the day, they all are the same. It's all according to how you want to translate your belief into reality. Yep. What? Just be free. Just be free. Did I just <laughs> say that? Did I just say that? <laughs> well, a lot of people get it blurred, and they and they and it's a bunch of misconceptions about it. Christianity, in its core, is paganism. They they just deny it because they don't want to be associated with that nasty stigma of being a witch. Right. Well, not only that, but the church I did go to in the past, you know, they sit there and they also talk about witches being cults. Not a coven, they're cults. Well, I'm sorry, but the church I went to, that was a cult. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's a cult. Ever. <laughs> it's just so, it's, it is not, I, 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 I work with a lot of Christian witches. I've, I've caught a lot of slack from the community about working with Christian witches because they feel like it's hypocritical to what witchcraft means. And they're absolutely 100% wrong. 
the wrong. Being a witch, it's up, it's you to decide what path you want to follow. If you choose your God to be the Christian form of God, or if you, if you, if you honor Jesus Christ as one of your gods, or if you decide you're going to have uh, Mother Mary to be one of your goddesses, or a lot of people don't realize there's so many deities in the Holy Bible that people can relate to, but choose not to because they're afraid of using the name witch. Noah, yeah. Noah, Moses, uh, David, King David. These these are all characters that people could honor, but choose not to because they're afraid of that title of witch and witchcraft. Yep. Yep. Boom. It is mind blowing. Boom. And I don't understand why people don't get it. I don't get it. I don't. I don't why they can't understand. If you just sit and you think about it and you rationalize it, everything is it's the book of the the Maganagi. It's uh, the five branches of the Maganagi. The Holy Bible. They're all, and they're all. Um, the the people are gonna get mad at me for saying this, <laughs> but these stories are fictional. These are created characters to help guide you in your life. All the gods and goddesses have stories behind them, and these stories are meant to help you get through situations or help you get through something in your life. If you can relate to uh, hypothetically Moses from the Bible, if you can relate to him, if you feel like you that you was a slave or you were, or you felt like you was part of something, but you're not part of that anymore, like Moses, he was he worked for the Egyptians. He mm -hmm. used to murder uh, murder Christians, a uh, murder pagans. But yes. later on down the road, he ended up freeing these slaves. He found his error in his ways, and he turned and did the right thing. Now, he felt like he was spoken through from God to do these things, and I get that, but each story, whether it's the Maganagi, or whether it's the Holy Bible, or whether it's an old ancient book, these are all stories to help guide us in our lives. And it's really ultimately up to us to decide what story, what, what deity that we want to work with. Yep. You couldn't say no better. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just body fucking myself tonight, I guess. <laughs> so, that being said, uh, do you, uh, are you, what was your last spell or ritual that you recently did? Do you remember? Uh, yes, it was actually a hair growth spell. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I tried to grow. I'm growing my hair out long. I've, you know, chopped at it and chopped at it. So now it's just let it grow and get my spell to help me grow it. I've only let, been letting my hair grow for about three years. Three years. Wow. I brush it one time a day once a day, and that's when I get up in the morning, I brush my hair, put it in ponytail, and I'm off to work. I don't put a brush through it, I don't do nothing special with it, I let it go, I don't even cut the dead ends off, the, off my hair. Hey, neither do I. <laughs> but, this is about a year's growth. I had a short bob about up to my chin, so this is a year of growth, along with my spells. spells. Yeah, mm -hmm. our spells are working out. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> okay, so here's another question for you. Do, do you. do you have a favorite pagan artist, like mu uh, music artist? Uh, or do you even listen to that type of music? I, 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 I do. I listen to all kinds of music, you know, and it's funny because, you know, my son, one day I had pagan music playing. An hour later, I had oldies playing. <laughs> a lot of people, so, are, they think that they have to have, they think that just like with, oh my goodness, 
Here I go. I'm just going to push the envelope <laughs> tonight, folks. Just like with uh, Christians believe, they believe that they have to have, they have to listen to a certain type of music, which is Christian music. And they, they, they feel guilty, I guess, and, and if they listen to anything that's secular or mainstream. But I'm right. a believer that music is one of the most powerful forms of magic. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it's pagan music, if it's mainstream. I find strength in metal music. When I'm doing, uh, when I'm doing like, if I'm wanting to feel a little witchy, I'll put some five finger death punch on. I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> I, I should, it's whatever ignites that magic inside of you. Exactly. Me, that is pagan music. Yep, I mean, see, the the kind of pagan music I listen to, I don't even have words to it. It's just literally the drums, the melodies, and, you know, it, it's going to get a little personal here, people, but one of them is literally saved. It's like the dark drums going, the dark music. That's literally me and my husband's sex music. <laughs> you know, it, it's sex magic. So... Yeah, you know. I, I try to uh, start that in my group, in the group that I have. I uh, I've been trying. I, I I brought that subject up, where me and my wife we we, we took a picture of ourselves naked. We mm -hmm. didn't we didn't expose our complete bodies, of course. We you know we did it tastefully, but when we took the picture, we was naked. And there's such a and I'm glad you brought this subject up, Gigi. It, it's sex magic because there's such a huge misconception or a fear. Of talking about it because it leads to uh, sometimes leads to, into inappropriate conversations and people start getting the wrong ideas and I get that but that's a, it's a very very powerful magical tool sex magic and I did bring that up in a conversation and I was really pleasantly surprised about the the, the positive feedback and people were talking in the comments about things that they they do and how 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 powerful it was in, in their lives. So I, I commend you. Uh, you know, you was a little bit fearful about saying it because it's personal. Not yet. But you, you, you came out with it. You, you stood in, you conquered that fear. So bravo. Well, you, it's a big stigma over it. It is. And, you know, a lot of people think of literally sex itself as taboo. Well, you know what? Everybody does it. How the hell would we be here? It's part so, of you know. It's, it's part of our core human instincts. Yep. It goes right along with eating, <laughs> eating sex, and eating. Yep. I'm just saying. It, no, hey. In our core, we're, we have our animal instincts. Our ancestor, ancestral instincts. You know, if that makes any sense. It's a part of our DNA, of who we are. And... There's nothing to hide from because it's it should be it's it's beautiful and why not use the power from it you know <laughs> exactly so yeah it's a beautiful thing and people live a lot people live a lot in fear and, and we shouldn't fear our ourself and what i mean by that we shouldn't fear what we look like we shouldn't fear what we look like look at our when we look at ourselves in the mirror we shouldn't be afraid to look at ourselves and see what we see back. We should be exactly. comfortable what we look like in the nude. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we were born naked. And if it wasn't for society putting that fear of, well, you can't be, you can't walk around with your T-shirt off, or you can't walk around with your, your butt naked, it's because we're programmed to think that way. But if you think about it, it's primal. It's beauty. It's yep. love, it's grace, it's art, and it's a beautiful art form. Our bodies are the most beautiful art form in the universe. Well, it's just like with my daughter. She's, she's a phenomenal artist, and she's going to continue to pursue her dream in this. And, uh, you know, she was getting ready to do a project for school. I didn't know it was for school, and she's like, Mom, I'm going to draw you. And I'm like, oh, can you draw me naked? And she's like, Mom, it's for school. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, she came up to me the other day, and she's like, 
you know, I'll draw you naked. I was like, okay, awesome. Let's go for this. So yeah, we're going to one day this week coming up, go ahead and schedule the appointment and find out where we're doing it at. <laughs> Your daughter's penciling in for new drawings. Yeah. <laughs> so that you guys have that kind of a relationship that she feels comfortable enough to do that. Oh, both of my kids. I'm, I'm an open book to my kids. You know, honesty is the best thing. Be honest. You know, I'm not trying to let my kids grow up. The government's corrupted as it is. Why, why do I continue want to corrupt my kids and blindness? So, you know, let's Bravo. learn. <laughs> Bravo to you. Bravo. We need more parents like that in, in, in this world. We really do. Thank Give you. Them giving them the, the, the ability and the control to choose their own life. Not being a dictator, but being a supportive parent. Yep. Yep. He goes you, Gigi. Thank you. I think that we are about to wrap the show up. Thank you very much for being my very first guest back onto the Witches Hour. Thank you. It was an honor, too. It well, really was. It was more of an honor of me because you helped me overcome a fear. And in the process, I helped you overcome a fear. Yes. <laughs> now we're two blazing stars in the sky who overcome massive fears to come back here and do this. So yep, that's right. Very, very much for doing this with me. You're quite welcome. And everybody, thank you very much for tuning in for the uh, episode of Witches Hour. Until next time, everybody, be sure to always and always live, love, and be free. Until next time, everybody, take care, be safe out there. <laughs>
that's what I 